Hi students, my name is Niyati Said and thanks for watching Edupedia Word Videos. My topic for the presentation is classification of living beings. Okay. If you look around, you will see a large variety of living organisms, be it potted plant, insects, birds, your pet or other animals and plant. There are also several organisms that you cannot see with your naked eye. But they are all around you. If you were to increase the area that you make observation in, the range and the variety of organism that you see would increase. Obviously, if you were to visit a dense forest, you would probably see a much greater number and the kind of living organism in it. Each different kind of plant, animal or organism that you see represents a species. The number of species that are known and described range between 1.7 to 1.8 million. This refers to biodiversity or the number and the type of organism present on earth. We should remember here that as we explore new areas and even old ones, new organisms are continuously being identified. As stated earlier, there are millions of plants and animals in the world. We know the plant and the animals in our own area by their local names. These local names would vary from place to place, even within a country. Probably you would recognize the confusion that would be created if we did not find ways and means to talk to each other to refer to organism we are talking about. Hence, there is a need to standardize the naming of living organisms such that a particular organism is known by the same name all over the world. This process is called nomenclature. Obviously, nomenclature or naming is only possible when organism is described correctly and we know what to what organism the name is attached to. That is known as identification. Okay? I hope I have satisfied your query that is why is it important to place living things into categories okay now what's the history of taxonomy and what were the objectives behind it first to describe Aristotle classification system and explain why it was replaced and second explain linear system of classification and identify the main criterion he used to classify organism and third what are the seven levels of organization that linears used to categorize organisms and fourth what criterion do modern taxonomists use to classify an organism and fifth what are two reasons that species names are more precise than common names okay now we will be studying about the Aristotle classification system that was very early system of classification okay he is the Aristotle and uh, he first classified more than 2,000 years ago by the Greek philosopher Aristotle okay and uh, what he did was uh, he grouped organisms into land dwellers, water dwellers and air dwellers. Plants were placed in uh, three categories based on the difference in their stems. Okay, As new organisms were discovered, his system became inadequate. This is the reason why Aristotle system of classification failed. First, categories were not specific enough and second common names did not describe a species accurately and third names were long and hard to remember okay now come to the modern system of uh, organization or classification he is the linears after Aristotle, Linnaeus classified organism into categories okay Carlos Linnaeus uh, is the father of the modern taxonomy in mid 1700s was a Swedish biologist who established a simple system for classifying and naming organism he developed a hierarchy or you can say a ranking system for classifying organism that is the basis for modern taxonomy okay modern system of a nested hierarchy or you can say seven level of organization Linus used an organism morphology form and a structure of course to categorize it 
okay his system is still being used today his system allows organism to be grouped with similar organism he first divided all organism into two kingdoms that is kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia okay kingdom animalia we have already studied and um, there is a kingdom plantae which you will be studying in your botany okay this was the same as aristotle main categories okay what were his uh, seven level of uh, classification kingdom phylum class order family genus and a species now how to remember this king philip came over for grandma soup king for kingdom k for kingdom p for phylum c for class o for order f for family g for genus and s for a species okay now what would the seven levels of organization is all about each kingdom was divided into phylum okay the uh, phylum means division for plants okay and each phylum into smaller group called as class okay and each class was divided into an order and each order was divided into family and each family was divided into genus and each genus was divided into a species okay always note that phyla and the family were not in linear classification system but were added by the modern scientist okay that means phylum and family they both were not in the seven level it was not in the level of classification by the linears they are added phylum and family they were added in the modern mode of classification okay now come to nomenclature and identification an organism is known by different names in different languages it would be impossible for any person to remember the name of an organism in all the languages isn't hence there is a need for a, pro a uniform system of nomenclature of organism a uniform system of nomenclature and identification helps the scientist in systematic study of living beings icbn is a international code for botanical nomenclature okay this is for the plants scientific names are based on agreed principles and criteria which are provided in international code for botanical nomenclature okay now you may ask how are animals named animal taxonomists have evolved international code of zoological nomenclature okay the scientific names ensure that each organism has only one name description of any organism should enable the people to arrive at the same name they also ensure that such a name has not been used for any other known organism okay biologist they follow universally accepted principles to provide scientific names to known organisms each name has two components the generic name and the specific epithet okay this system of uh, providing a name with two components is called as binomial nomenclature okay this naming system was given by carlos linus is being practiced by biologists all over the world okay this naming system using a two word format was found convenient that is why okay what are the general rules for nomenclature biological names are usually written in uh, latin they are written in italics okay latin and italics both at the same time and a biological name usually contains two terms the first shows the genus while the second shows the species okay biological name is underlined when it is handwritten and the first term of the biological name begins with capital letter the second and the subsequent terms begin with the small letter okay before that i would like to tell you about the other universal rules of nomenclature are as follows that uh, 
biological names are generally in Latin and uh, written in italics as I have told you. They are Latinized or divided from Latin irrespective of their origin. Please mark that. And the first word in a biological name represents the genus while the second component denotes the specific epithet. Okay. And the third, both the words in a biological name when handwritten are separately underlined or printed in italics to indicate their Latin origin. Okay. And the first word denotes the genus start with a capital letter while the specific epithet starts with a smaller letter. It can be illustrated with an example such as Magnifera Indica. Okay. Sorry, I forgot to mention here an example, but I'm telling you that uh, suppose uh, mango name is Magnifera Indica. Okay. Taxonomic categories. Various uh, types of the classification hierarchy are called as taxonomic categories. Each category represents a particular rank and is usually called as taxon. Okay. First is species. Taxonomic studies consider a group of individual organisms with fundamental similarities as a species. Okay. One should be able to distinguish one species from the other closely related species based on distinct morphological differences. Okay. Now let us consider Magnifera indica that is mango okay. and Solanum tuberosum that is potato and panthera leo that is lion all the three names indica tuberosum and leo represent the specific epithets while the first word that is magnifera solanum and panthera they are genera and represents another higher level of taxon or category each genus may have uh, one or more than one specific epithet representing different organism but having morphological similarities. For example, Panthera has a, another specific epithet called Tigris and Solanum includes species like Nigrum and Melongena. Okay? Human beings belong to a species Sapiens which is grouped in the genus Homo. Okay? And the scientific name thus for human being is written as Homo sapiens. Okay? Now come to genus. Genus comprises a group of related species which has more characters in common in comparison to species of the other genera. We can say that genera are aggregates of closely related species. For example, a potato and the brinjal are two different species but both belong to a genus Solanum. Okay? This genus differs from other genus uh, by, you know, fellas which includes cats, which uh, I'm talking about is lion, that is Panthera leo, and leopard, that is Pardus, and the tiger is Panthera tigris, with several common features are all species of the genus Panthera, okay? And this genus differs from other genus fellas which includes cats, okay? Then comes family. It is a group of closely related genera. is called as family. For example, potato and chili, they belong to the family Solanaceae. This is the next category. And the family has a group of related genera with the still less number of similarities as compared to genus and species. Families are characterized on the basis of both vegetative and reproductive features of plant species. Okay. Among plants, for example, three different genera, Solanum, Petunia and Datura, they are placed in the family Solanaceae. Among animals, for example, genus Panthera comprising lion, tiger, leopard is put along with genus Felis, that is cats in the family Felidae. Okay. Similarly, if you observe the features of a cat and a dog, you will find some similarities and some differences as well. They are separated into two different uh, families Felidae and Canidae respectively. Okay. Now come to order. 
You have seen earlier that categories like species, genus and families, they are based on number of similar characters. Generally, order and other higher taxonomic categories are identified based on the aggregates of characters. Order being a higher category is the assemblage of families which exhibit a few similar characters. The similar characters are less in number as compared to different genera including in a family. Plant families like uh, Solanaceae and uh, Convolaceae are included in the order polynomials mainly based on the floral characters. Okay. Similarly, Felidae and Conidae, uh, Concidae, they belong to order Carnivora. Okay, Felicidae and Conicidae means cat family and dog family respectively. They belong to order Carnivora. Okay, and then comes a class. This category includes related orders. For example, order Primata comprising monkey, gorillas and gibbon is placed in class Mammalia along with order Carnivora. That includes animal like tiger, cat and dog. Okay. Now comes a phylum. Classes comprising animals like fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds along with mammals constitute the next higher category called phylum. All these based on the common features like presence of notochord, dorsal hollow neural system, they are included in the phylum chordata. Okay. And in case of plants, classes with a few similar characters are assigned to a higher category called division. This will be taught by your botany teacher. Now comes kingdom. All animals belonging to several or various phyla are assigned to a highest category called kingdom animalia that we have already studied in the classification or system of animals. Okay. The kingdom plantae on the other hand is distinct and comprises all plants from various divisions. Henceforth, we will refer to these two groups as animal and plant kingdoms. Okay. The taxonomic uh, categories from species to kingdom have been shown in the ascending order in the previous uh, section of this presentation. Okay. These are the broad categories. And uh, for example, all autotropic organisms which are eukaryotic and contain chloroplasts are kept under plant kingdom. And similarly, all heterotropic organisms which are eukaryotic, they lack a cell wall, are kept under animal kingdom. Okay. This is the classification hierarchy of organism. Suppose this is a bobcat. Okay. This is the kingdom Animalia. It belong bobcat belongs to a Animalia kingdom. Phylum is Chordata. Class is Mammalia. Order is Carnivora. Family is Phalidae. And genus is Linex. And species is Linus rufus. Okay. And likewise, lion and shaggy mane mushroom. Okay. This is the classification of a modern human. Okay. Uh, the Homo sapiens, Homo erectus, gorilla, elephant, fish, snake, sea, earthworm, and snail. Okay, and these are kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Okay, and this is the classification of cheetah domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. They both are given in the descending order. Now, what is modern taxonomy? Modern taxonomists, they split species into subsets called varieties. Zoologists, they refer to variation of a species that occur in different ge geographic areas called subspecies. To classify organism, modern taxonomists, they consider the phylogeny or the evolutionary history of the organism. Okay. These are the additional level of organization. Botanists sometimes split species into subsets known as varieties. Peaches and nectarians are the different variety of peach tree, prunus and persica. Okay. 
Now comes the binomial nomenclature. Okay. Names were based on Latin or ancient Greek words. Scientists everywhere, they understood these languages. The first word of the scientific name is the name of the genus to which the organism belongs to. And the genus name refers to the relatively small group of organism to which a particular type of organism belongs. Okay. And the second word of the name is the species. That is known as the species identifier. Okay, the species name is usually a Latin description of some important characteristics of the organism. Now, what are the rules for writing scientific name? When we use the Latin name for an organism, we always capitalize the genus, but not the species identifier. That is the second part. We also print the name in italics or underline them. For example, Esser rubrum. Okay, that means it is a red maple tree. Okay, where ESO is a Latin name for maple. Okay, that maple is a genus. Okay, and the rubrum is a Latin word for red or a species. Okay, humans are named as Homo sapiens. Homo because of our large brain and upright posture, and sapiens is a uh, because of our intelligence and ability to speak okay modern phylogenetic uh, taxonomy what were the objectives behind it explain what information can be gathered from a phylogenetic tree what is a systematic uh, taxonomy and what are four kinds of evidences used to organize organisms and third how can the embryological evidence be used to show phylogenetic relationship that are not evident from either the study or the morphology or the study of the fossil record and explain cladistic taxonomy and identify one conclusion that is in conflict with classical systematic taxonomy what are two flaws of the molecular clock model on determining re relatedness between species? Okay. Now, what is systematics? Systematics is a system that organizes the tremendous diversity of organism into phylogenetic tree. A phylogenetic tree is a family tree that shows the evolutionary relationship throughout, through to exist between organism. Okay. This is the phylogenetic tree of kingdom Animalia. Porifera, Cnidarians, Platyhelminthes, Nematode, Molluscans, Annelid, Arthropoda, Echinodermata, and Chordata. They were the classified kingdom Animalia. Okay, and uh, they were all uh, from the ancestral process protist. Okay, that we have already studied in detail. Okay. And what are the fossil records? The fossil record often provides clue to evolutionary relationship. It cannot be read like a storybook because some fossil records are incomplete. And systematic taxonomists, they consider other evidences to confirm information contained within the fossil record with other lines of evidences. Okay. Now, the morphology. Taxonomists, they study an organism morphology and compare it with the other living organism. Homologous features are important, but it is important to separate features that are truly homologous with those the same homologous, but are actually analogous. That means opposite. Okay. This is a homology and analogy. Homology, bat wing and human arm, they both are like uh, the same. And analogy is uh, bat wing, butterfly wing and bird wing. They seem same but uh, actually they are analogous or opposite. Now the embryological patterns of development. Early pattern and the embryological development, they also provide the evidence of the phylogenetic relationship okay they also provide means of testing hypothesis about relationship that have developed from other lines of evidences okay this is the illustration of the embryo resemblance
Now comes the chromosome and the macromolecules. Taxonomists use comparison of macromolecules such as DNA, RNA and protein as a kind of molecular clock. Okay. Scientists compare amino acid sequences for homologous protein molecules of different species. The number of the amino acid. Amino acids are the protein builders or the protein monomers. Okay. So the number of the amino acid differences provides a clue to how long ago two species diverged from a shared evolutionary ancestor. Okay. Biologists also compare the karyotypes or the pattern of chromosome of two related species. Okay. I have omitted uh, this uh, figure but I have written here so just ignore this. This is a comparison of the karyotypes between human, chimpanzee, gorilla, orangutan chromosomes. Okay. Now comes the cladistic. Cladistic is a system of taxonomy that reconstructs phylogenies by inferring relationship based on similarities. It is used to determine the sequences in which different groups of organisms evolved. These unique characteristics are called as derived traits or the derived characters. Okay. This is cladogram. Uh, using pattern of shared de derived traits, biologists use cladistics to construct a branching diagram called cladogram. A cladogram shows a sequence in which different group of organisms evolve. The key to cladistics is identifying morphological, physiological, molecular or behavioral traits that differ among the organism being studied and that can be attributed a common ancestor. Okay. Thank you and stay tuned.